Um, going to kind of say, again, no hard segues here or anything like that, but I do want to uh, kind of switch tones. This is going to be a little bit more of a lightning round, if you want to call it that. Answer, answer how you see fit. But some of these questions I know you've answered a lot before, even when you were here. So uh, just people keep asking them, so I want to keep bringing them up. Yeah, no, and the first one is, and this one actually is one that I, I so totally support as far as a question. I would really love to be able to get both a physical copy and a PDF from the Palladium store. I don't like giving drive through RPG money. I'll give Big Geek Emporium money and I'll give Palladium store money. I don't want to give it to drive through RPG. So to, to buy separately is kind of a pain in the butt. We'd really like to make that happen. Yeah. Um, one thing that, that we have on uh, in the works in the background is mm -hmm. a new store, um, a new new web store um, yeah. with completely new programming and everything. And um, that is going to be compatible with different solutions to that problem. But right now, um, that we I've actually spent a lot of time with Wayne looking for solutions on that with our current yeah. merchant software. And it's just, it's not possible without, I mean, it, especially when we already have another store in development, but we are right there with you. You know, well, the other thing is, you know, Hey, guess what? That's a great way for, for, for fans to support us. When you, if we could sell the PDFs through our own store, yeah. then we don't have to give anything away to, to, to drive through. Right. So then all of your funds are coming to help support palladium. So no, we, we're, we're totally on that. Uh, we think that's a really important move. Yeah. Um, and not just because, you know, we don't like drive through or something, but just because, We'd rather have all that under one roof. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, we got a lot of little things going on behind the scenes. We do. We have that, a lot. Of, it's it's it well, takes, not even so little. Right. Know, and we, but, it takes time. And so when, yeah. when Kevin says we're doing all this stuff, there's a lot of things like this that yeah. we are working on. It does take time. It takes time to also bring to fruition. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, could make make things a lot better for everybody. So. Okay. Now, let's, let's flip that flip that around for a moment now there are folks who are like hey i've got pdfs i'd love to have print on demand that's tricky it gets right? a little trickier in the sense that uh quality and price yeah okay. i mean quality and price okay you so could order you is, could order yeah, print on could, demand books through uh through drive through for we, our, our pdfs we, right no no we don't have we don't allow that we don't allow because that. we because the quality yeah, is so bad. We can't yeah, guarantee we, the quality of the product, so you don't want to put your name on it. And the price also is very high because I've ordered stuff that was print on demand through drive through right? Yeah. I paid the premium to have them print it. I was not impressed with the result, yeah. right? And I'm not – no shade yeah, on drive through yeah. It's just – it's a technological hurdle mm -hmm. that is slowly improving over time. But that's one of those things that right now what we're doing, what, what the way we do it, we why we do it, why we do it, how we do it is because we're trying to get people the best product at the best price. Yeah, a great example. And, and again, drive through is just trying to help. But, um, you know, people sometimes complain about the quality of some of the PDFs. And, and the thing is, we were to do a quality PDF that we were shooting from the original key lined pages because uh, all our early books were physically pasted up on mm -hmm. board uh, and, and then cleaned exist, up and they look beautiful that way. But it was taken forever, and drive through said, "Send us a bunch of your books. We'll just chop off the, you know, chop off the spine. And we'll run them through our machine. We can do like a hundred books in a week." And we're like, "Great!" And they only charge, you know, some small amount of money to do it, and the quality is real and even. That's and that's and, why, for instance, with the Titan Robotics Kickstarter, part of it is remastering the yeah. all the books that make up the Cyborgs collection. Because guess what? <laughs> that's a that's like a lot of, of work and you're going to get a way better pdf with bookmarks and stuff like that out the other side yeah. but the problem was before it was just scans because yeah. there was no yeah. digital version of right source book two mechanoids yeah mm -hmm. and, and lots of other books and lots of other books so, <laughs> so, other so books, yeah that's one of those things that to explain to fans too you know we offered that i think some people get it i think some people don't but you know, for anyone who maybe doesn't, like, that's part of it. Is is when we do this, we plan on doing that going forward. When we do future books, as other associated books, we're going to offer the same thing where we will remaster them, and that's okay. because that's actually going to really help us, you know, uh, be able to do. Because if that book doesn't exist in any sort of digital format, it is a lot of work to get that into oh, yeah. InDesign, right? Um, and bookmarked and all the the cool. Yeah beautiful stuff that we like to do so anyways 
I used to have to do that kind of page layout because I was a graphic artist in the Air Force back right. in the early 90s. So the whole blue pencil, the, the tape, you know, putting the tape on to get everything in there adjusted just right. Oh, yeah. I thank God for PageMaker and now InDesign. Oh, hang on, hang on. The, the, the whole print on demand thing, uh, from, from my understanding of it from the outside, is uh, there, there are three different levels of print on demand and only two of them are good. The problem is they're both the most expensive. There is the handmade one at a time. You got guaranteed quality made by monks on top of a mountain, whatever you say it is. But, you know, <laughs> le leather, yeah, leather bound, beautiful calligraphy, but that's going to cost you a hundred bucks. And then there's the, there's the super high end, you know, uh, mass production type, but it's super high end to get that good quality you want. But again, a hundred bucks. It sucks. And then there's the middle, which is what drive through RPG does. And the, the technology well, isn't well, there to make that. Well, there's, yeah, there's, it, well, it, it, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. not just them. It, 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 any company that, that I use that as an example because we were talking about it. Sure. But, but any company that specializes on, uh, on print on demand, what it is is you have a printer who is set up to do a particular kind of run of books. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the digital process these days, you know, you can print one or a thousand it's not a big deal, but you know, the thing is they're, they're usually set up to take a particular type of paper, which isn't going to be the best because that company needs to make money on what they're printing. Right. You know, it gets kind of funky. And no, I, I understand. See that, yeah. The, what, what I was yeah. saying that the, the technology to make that middle of the road option acceptable to you is not there. I get it, but right. yeah. Yep. Playing yep. devil's advocate. I will say, that your quality has never been there. Oh, why would I say that? Because every single Palladium book I've ever bought has the has the film. The little oh, the film, cover. <laughs> the, 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 the cover peels away. It's got oh, look at Sean is like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Sean, come on now. You know what I'm talking about. No, no, no every, but it lasts like, I my my riffs book is 30 oh, no, years no, no, old. No, 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 no. I I have I'm plenty not, of other books I'm, that have I'm fallen making apart from everybody else from the same era. And they yeah. did not survive the, the way that no, my you're right. Book you're you're that's right. Film my film. Film. That's nasty. Yeah, the film will peel a little bit, but it's still the, the cover's still there. I know, there, I know, I know. I'm still making in one fun. Point. Kevin knows. Look at Kevin. He's laughing. He knows. He knows. Kevin knows. Yeah. No. Seriously. All the rest. Of Every stuff Palladium that book has a peel. Apart. If if you do a PDF to print, you have to tell the manufacturer of this print you got to have no, the no, no, no. goddamn peel. Oh, you son of a bitch! You have You've to. got to have the peel, or else it's not palladium. <laughs> but the <laughs> peel back. No, shut the up. Palladium it's, peel. It's the palladium, the palladium peel. peel. Oh, in twenty years, you can peel the cover off of your book too. <laughs> oh, it'll just naturally happen as long as you use it. No, See, it that's how you know if the books yeah, were here's, used. Here's my nineteen ninety four right, wrist book. Thing. It's got the peel. It's got the peel. My uh, my uh, ninjas super spies has the peel. My my heroes unlimited has the peel. They yeah. all have the peel. My, all my, of them. My, my, but, my but as you can see from the book itself, it's good. It is also still more than serviceable. There's not yeah. a single page missing. The binding is still perfect. Unlike unlike the stupid ass. Uh, Star Trek Adventures book oh, God. that I had for a week, and the pages started fucking falling out. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> Piss me off. He should be pissed too because he's the one who bought it for me. Yeah, that's probably well, print I, on demand, by the way. <laughs> I feel I feel better with how much you hated it that it was worth the purchase. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so, so on, on the topic of uh, of again products will say um are there any new miniatures in the work or oh look at that uh, yeah oh his isn't just peeled <laughs> his is chewed oh That's yeah awesome. is, dude what, 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 what would you have a sharpay do that what happened no, <laughs> I, I wore through the front of the book that's oh, awesome i've used it i've used it too much see no that's no what no what you what it is you, what is, you have use to, it too much you have to trim see? your that's fingernails the book you have open. to trim your fingernails because when you have you long fingernails it. that's what that's happens not, there's no nail marks it's it's evenly worn down <laughs> no, but but there but there is truth to this uh, it, it's it's funny there but there's are truth some to this. pizza stains though <laughs> these books do last and, and i don't last. know what kind of soft cover binding you use compared to other companies but none of my palladium books I, don't know. Have, what, I don't know what you put in there yep. but jesus yeah none of my, my palladium books CRT. have fallen apart yep and Every and i've used palladium 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 palladium. Palladium. a lot 
So, but um, so so three D printing. Do you have? Are you basically? It's it's a general uh, miniatures question. Uh, do you have any plans to sell STLs for people who have three D printers, or do you have plans to create more miniatures soon in the future? Because there are some people chomping at the bit apparently for some Riffs miniatures. Yeah, they say that. They do, <laughs> but they, they won't buy it. it. It's, it's like well, Twitter. Sort of, sort of. I mean, we're going to have to do a review of that. We've been talking about that for a while. We're going to have to really look at the numbers because people say we want minis, we want minis, we want minis. Oh, we want beautiful minis. We've got beautiful resin minis. And then online, everyone's like, well, they're not STL, so I'm not going to buy them. But these are the same people that, you know, a year and a half, two years ago, three years ago, were saying, oh, if you had minis, I'd buy them. Well, we have beautiful minis and you're not buying them. So we're going to have to really look at those numbers because we're a business yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it costs a lot to sculpt beautiful minis. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it really and, costs. Well, it's and it's and the, the whole thing with the, uh, with selling just the file, you know, you, you sell it once and it's, it's, it's like, it's like a Napster. You sell it once and now, now everyone's got it. No one else has right, to right. buy how it. Right. How are we supposed to make back that? I, so exactly. I, 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 I know a little bit about that this too. I used you know? to work for games workshop. As a store manager, I yeah. had the tour of their whole facility um, back when their headquarters were in Maryland. Um, I know about the economics involved. I mean, it's it, 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 it's well, and we're a book company, mm -hmm. so we're not plating miniatures. Um, we're <laughs> plating books. But if there's anybody who owns a miniatures company that does a great job and want to come talk to us about licensing different plating settings, we'd love to talk to you. But if, unless you're a pro and you have done things before and you can show us, you're probably um, not going to get be cost effective, well, and and have the quality that 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 you know the minimum quality you're looking for. Right. And I'm, what, what I'm saying too is, if you really want the minis, then go buy the ones we already have. But yeah, we're not yeah. going to do the STL thing. Yeah, it's it's more expensive, <laughs> but they'll, 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 yeah, they'll last uh, almost as long as the books. Right. So yeah, we want those resin because... ones are beautiful. I mean, it's they're amazing quality, and I've just been really surprised because we have been selling a number of them. They've done really well on the add-on store for Titan Robotics mm -hmm. and as part of the campaign. So I've been really happy with that, but we're really going to have to look at those numbers. I mean, it's just as a guy who loves minis, I'm all, but, but that's, you see, there's a little bit of like me going like, that's what you say, because <laughs> I'm getting annoyed with it at this point, because we have fans. In case say, you couldn't tell. I want, I want your, yeah. I want minis. It's like, well, buy the damn ones we have that are beautiful. It's beautiful. Leyline Walker and, 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 uh, you Juicer know, Juicer and, and Glitter, Glitter Boy, Boy and all types of stuff. And, See, I'm I'm on the flip side of that one. I don't like minis. I yeah. want I play my games up here now. I like maps in an abstract manner because I like to kind of know the general lay of the land. I hate hex grids. I'll do, I'll I'll play BattleTech if I want that. And uh, uh, I don't I don't like this this whole square thing like D and D does. I just want to play the game. Like like yeah. I, I and for me that's it's a role playing game. So I want to have it in my imagination. But that's also I'm a different type of player in that regard. There are the mini players, and then there are the theater more theater of the mind players and the people in between. So uh, I couldn't I like imagine to playing I riffs like to from tactical to theater. Right, I like to mm -hmm. do both. So I see it, or the paper, the 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 yeah, what do they call them? They, the pawns, the pawns. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the the pinnacles, yeah. uh, they, they, they call it the pawns. We have those available through the uh, Titan Robotics uh, back kit as well um, as part of that campaign. Those are pretty beautiful cardboard minis. The, the art's really nice. The colors are They're really die nice. cut. Okay. The wonderful thick yeah. material that'll last forever. You get, I don't know, ridiculous, like 12 sheets. There's like uh, over 100 pawns in the first. You have a bunch of Arknight uh, uh, standees, I think I'm supposed to call them. Uh, so I, have, so I I get that. That's more of my yeah, style. Those so are something I can put up here. Those are a different, but yeah, mm -hmm. similar kind of right. And, that, and then, so, idea. yeah, yeah. So, but uh, those are great too. And if you want something, people are like, we want minis, but then do you really want them? Do you really want to paint all of them just for one encounter? Yeah. Right. I mean, I could get having minis for say coalition troops and, you know, major characters like lime walkers and glitter boys. Do, do you really want like minis of a bunch of random riffs monsters though? If you're only going to use them once or twice in the camp, you know, in years of a campaign or something. So I don't know. That's where it's sometimes it's like the paper pawns might be a really great option as well because you've got a sure. big breadth there, and it looks looks surprisingly good on a tabletop. I'm with you. I I'm not really a miniature guy. I mean, I appreciate them and I appreciate the art that goes into them. I appreciate. I think the people who paint those things and do magnificent jobs are a insane and 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 b you know amazing. But thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it, it, that's not me. <laughs> me either. The channel I watch here, the GM Zelko, shout out to him. Really great, absolutely magnificent painter. Good, good RPG guy as well. Um, people should check him out. But uh, yeah, I'll watch him paint. And I'm like, I don't understand why you have the patience for that. Like, I just don't get it at all. But then again, I have the patience to sit here and, you know, read role playing game books. And other people are like, why would you just read a book that you're going to use once and go away? I'm like, haha, I'm not using it once. But, uh, <laughs> but a, a comment just came in the chat. And it's also the next one on my list here of questions that came from my Discord. Virtual tabletops. Again, I know we asked this one last time that you're here, Kevin. But uh, such as Foundry uh, for the Palladium rules. Apparently, there are Savage rules, uh, rules yeah. out there. And the specific comment that I got was essentially, this gives concern for people who think that Palladium is going the Savage rules route and will possibly be phased out because... <laughs> More games are now being played on VTTs than, well, they say than in person. I don't believe that. Um, but it's highly popular, and there isn't a Palladium version of that. So what, well, what do you guys have to say? Part of that comes from, again, the misunderstanding that the Savage Worlds rules uh, version of Rifts is something that Palladium initiated, right? That's not, that's someone paying a royalty to Palladium to be able to do that. So that's, it's not like Kevin chose Savage Worlds as the phase out Palladium or something. Correct. Um, and that is not my intention at all either. I have zero interest in that. Um, but uh, but yeah, what do you think about? I mean, BTT is. Cool. I mean, it's something we want to do, but again, it's it's not fast, cheap, or easy to do right. Right. So mm -hmm. that's where we're at. Um, we're trying to uh, strengthen our foundation and right. that's focus not on what we know yeah. best, which is books at the moment. Yeah. And then when we have more financial resources. Um, we will do more on the virtual tabletop. But no, you're not going to see something this year, and you're not going to see something probably even next year, unless something happens, unless someone approaches us, or, you know, we win the lotto. And, <laughs> you know, start programmers, <laughs> start approaching. <laughs> and Foundry. Foundry is the best but, place but, to start. But, but, but don't, one thing I'll say is people approach us, don't take this the wrong way, but we need professionals to approach us, right? Mm -hmm. That's part of the reason that Savage Worlds, that Pinnacle got the license to do Savage Rifts. They've done a lot of things before. If you haven't done it before, we're going to be very skeptical and mm -hmm. don't be surprised we say, mm, probably thanks, not right no now. Thanks, yeah. yeah. So, and that's not meant to be mean at all. That's just, we need to focus, because th that stuff like that, if we talk to everybody that came to us and just said, well, I, you know, would like to do X, Y, Z, that we spend half our time just doing that. We get stuff, we get requests um, and inquiries about that. And it's not, I'm not trying to be mean or anything. Yeah. It's just, if you want to, we've, we, we've had um, a couple of companies, real companies, for instance, reach out to us about licensing Palladium rules and or mm -hmm. settings. So, you know, and we'll have conversations with them. Right. Um, right. But if you haven't done anything before, then we, then we might say, you know, don't be surprised if we say this isn't what we're looking for. Right well, now. well, and think about it just from a practical point of view. If you're an individual, I don't care how supremely talented you are. We then run the risk of what happens if you can't complete the job, what happens if you get hit by a bus. And um, the other thing is, is if you, if we say we gave someone a license to do something, well, then what if someone that was eminently capable came along six months later and had a proposal? Yeah. We would then have to turn them down because we like we 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 essentially wasted. Well, that, that, that can happen with anyone. I mean, that, that's just bad luck at that point. But there, but like, there is oh. a due diligence. Well, no, but the involved. point is, is it, it's not bad luck if you if you cut out people that aren't likely to succeed from the equation, then you don't get yourself occupied. And, by and, and, and we run into yeah, you're right. They're they're not likely to get hit by a bus. You know, that was sort of an extreme example. But we've had numerous people have it's reached not, out. That's the problem. Getting hit by a bus isn't the problem. It, Finishing the job. <laughs> yes. The problem. Or, or doing it right, and that's part of that. We, yeah. We've had a number of people who are super passionate in, in the past who came to us and we said, "Yes, go for it, run with it." And then a third of the way through, they go, "Oh man, this is so much work." And I, I, my wife had a baby, and mm -hmm. you know, golly, uh, I'm being transferred to you know Utah, and uh, and meanwhile, Kevin's spending 10, 15 hours a week communicating with this yeah. with this person. Trying to give them support, writing up approvals, approvals, and doing writing up uh, other specs for them, specs, getting yeah. art scanned for them. Yeah. Okay. So then, at the end of the year, there's one last book that Kevin could have written, or two. Yeah. All, or two. all those hours are gone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're just gone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're just yeah. gone. Just and so that's why it, it, I, I might sound like pretty like 
hardcore like really hardcore on that stuff but it's because this is a business if we don't run it like a business there will be no palladium books yeah. okay well, not, speaking, not only is it oh, business hang on. hang on speaking of the whole this is a business thing the whole vtt idea stay away from it for now don't even entertain it for now <laughs> until you see what happens with that one D and D D and D beyond bullshit where, mm. where they're, they're trying to nickel and dime everyone who uses it to death to, to turn tabletop role-playing into a fucking uh, pay to play video look, game. Look, because right now, if that, hang on, hang on. If that <laughs> works, if they make money on it, everyone's going to do it to stay competitive. And if you do that, I'll disown you. <laughs> well they, i will not, i will egg your home your place and home your place of business and your home every week until the day i die or i happen to be in jail because of it i saw that here comes a restraining off. order uh, kevin, kevin knows i've been talking about this since we started talking years ago um that you know wizards has been replacing um writers and me mechanic designers with software developers and microsoft ceos mm -hmm. quite some time at many levels um, and no, no shade on them. Hey, I think no, they're going to no, make no, all the shade on them. Stop guess it. what? Guess shade. what? Almost no one else in the space has the money to do what they're yeah. doing. So that's don't worry. We're not going to like well, uh, if we tried to do that. I don't know if we could do well, that. And, and but the point is, is books are doing great. Tight Robox is a very successful Kickstarter. That's awesome. And the back is going great, too. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, so, hey, we're focused on books. Yeah, yeah none of that's dead. And, and bear in mind, he's a dog. They're, they're, get back to perception and degree just because that's the way they're doing virtual tabletop doesn't mean that's the way we or anyone else has to do it and no, that creating that something that's a hybrid it's not even going to be what you would think of as a virtual tabletop like you see for savage rifts or something right. what they're doing is is a completely different hybrid thing yeah. of money grab, money grab. No. Money grab. no well everything's well, a money grab everything's yeah. a product um but so there's no shade on that but and I'm sure they'll make lots of money, but you know, it's, it's, it's a different thing. It's a different thing than even than what a normal VTD yeah, the, is. The, the uh, problem my, with, with a right. successful business model that, uh, that, that seemingly or overtly takes advantage of people. Uh, once it succeeds, everyone else in the same space will do it. I mean, look at I mean, PC gaming, microtransactions. Exactly. It succeeded and now everyone jumped on it. And then right. and then lawmakers, especially in Europe, are like, no, that's just gambling, that's illegal. And then yeah, and then okay, we gotta switch around. Wait, wait. <laughs> you know, let, 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 let someone else go there first. It, it's it's the, the, the greatest way to survive a trap. Go second. <laughs> I, I, I wish them i wish them all the luck and all the best you know I, I, just like i do the rest of the creators the rising tide lifts all ships you know we're focused on we're focused on books we're not we don't we don't want to get distracted by good all this other jazz books that, and role playing yeah 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 well, what's what's cool about that is uh you say yes there's the business aspect of it and i think when the business aspect takes over and i've said this on some other live streams we'll just say less professionally than this i i i think that that uh that actually dumbs down the product and the fact that you adamantly want your product to stay pure for lack of a better word right now to be what is in your vision and not worry about other the non other nonsense that's out there is actually the selling point is actually a strength for why palladium is only in We'll say it's second edition why we can go back 40 years and see some of the same stuff instead of rehash over and over and over again we have expansion upon 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 it's it's 92 books and you don't need all 92 books but it's got 92 there if you want right but well, we got like and they all work with each settings, other right yeah exactly right, we have 10 plus exciting settings you like you you know one you know one guy likes you know zombies the other one likes fantasy you know, Super superheroes mm -hmm. superheroes kung fu we got it all and if you like riffs, you just mash them all together in one big snowball and see what happens. <laughs> so with that said, are there any licenses you wish you could have obtained? And the example somebody sent me, I didn't know this, so you can refute this or tell me it's true. One of my favorite games out there you almost got, which was a West End game Star Wars. Apparently, yeah. that, the, now I'm not talking about the business side, but are there any are there any licenses that, man, I wish I could have got my hands on that one that you tried for? Yeah, I, you know, um, um Star Wars, of course. In fact, we, we were the, the last company to bow out of the bidding on, on that when West End got it. They had more money, and we we're like, oh, well. And, more money uh, than you were willing to. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, 
at one point we went after Marvel superheroes and oh, wow. we were, about, yeah, we were about to nail that deal down when, uh, Watsy stepped in and said, uh, gosh, we'll, we'll pay you even more than what Palladium is paying. I mean, we we're ready to drop contracts and, and Marvel superheroes. Don't do it. And- Ethan dog. Don't do it. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. You, I, I, I really, really don't think you could have done any better than this. I really don't think that this, that this is, this is the, the pinnacle of, of uh, comic book gaming right here. He didn't this need to. It. He's got heroes unlimited. Just saying. Yeah. I said, pure, pure comic book gaming. This is it. Superhero <laughs> gaming. Okay. That, that's a conversation. I'll, you, I'll take your word for it. it. But, but yeah, Star Wars, Marvel superheroes, alien <laughs> versus predator. Um, X-Files when it was hot. Um, we went after all those and would have liked to have gotten them. Would X Files been something that could have merged with, or would have been separate from, say, Beyond the Supernatural? Oh yeah, no, it would have been separate, been but but you could have easily, you know, used them. them together. Yeah, because uh, yeah. we called that the X Files game a couple of times when yeah. we were doing the review of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so so which book was the hardest of the ones in the collection so far? Which was the hardest one to get right? Like like it just. For whatever reason, it wasn't falling into place, but finally, after it was produced, so it has to be a book in that's out there, uh, like this finally turned out the way you wanted it to. Um, I, two books immediately come to mind um, Palladium Fantasy, because that was the first that really, I mean, the first fully yes, flesh Mechanoid, book book. Right. Yeah. Mechanoids yeah. came out, but it was drawing from stuff that I was already building on for Palladium Fantasy. And, you know, so that was tough because, you know, that was when I was originating the rules and there was tons and tons of years of playtesting and, you know, trying to decide how we're going to format things and then having to fight with distributors on not shrink wrapping the goddamn book and let people be able to flip through it and see the art and everything in it. That was a battle all by itself. You wouldn't think so, but it was. Uh, and then another book that comes to mind is Beyond the Supernatural Second Edition. Oh, to, 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 to really make it work to, to in to be a modern game that didn't feel contrived with okay. the we saw it with the psychic, the psychic, well, just the way and ISP the way and PPP you had a way psychic abilities and magic. Like, and when, when you come into work. contact with the supernatural, how you gain more. Abilities. Right, right. You, you, you get the you get the multiplier boost. Yeah, yeah. That, that actually took it took me like two months to write that those two freaking pages. Um, and, and I don't feel so right. bad anymore. <laughs> you should. It's been more than two months for you, slacker. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough thing when you're writing a book. Sometimes you run into something and you're like, oh, and you get stuck, right? And so you got to get it right. And and that's But that's the difference between a book that people want to read 20 years later and ones that they've forgotten about 20 years ago. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So on the flip side, got a lot of alternating questions here. Which book was the closest that you would call to perfection? The, the, this is the epitome that you're going to put up on the wall, at least for now, till the next book comes out, of course, that you'd say, this is the best one we have done. And all of them know. is not an answer. <laughs> I, I was going to say none of them. Oh, wow. I, I, I don't know if any of them are. Wow, that, that went south real quick. All right. <laughs> are, are, are perfect. Um, <laughs> Riffs! <laughs> Original edition. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, uh, you know, uh, I, I think Robotech came close. It's very um, okay. Especially the original Robotech. Cause I mean, yeah. I think it's a very loyal and accurate adaptation adaptation. Uh, and uh, while I spent like months and months and months of research and, and, you know, watching the series and analyzing the series and doing freeze frame and counting fucking missiles, <laughs> Uh, cause that, you know, that information wasn't available. You know, how many, you know, I laugh at that, but you know how pedantic people are and somebody would have done that. No, Kevin, there's no four missile launcher in Robotech. <laughs> exactly. Um, so while I did months of research on it, um, I, I, I banged that son of a gun out in three and a half weeks. Wow. When I just sat down to write it. It was just there. So, uh, just okay. float out of you in order for some magic reason. And yes. Atlantis, Atlantis did similarly too, right? So. Yeah, Rift's Atlantis was the uh, same thing. Um, Sentinels what was also, that took me like four and a half weeks, but it's a bigger book. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Eric Woodjick wrote TMNT. Again, there were like months and months and months where he and I were talking about the concept behind it, how mechanics should work, 
that kind of thing. And then when the original author turned in a piece of uh, an unacceptable manuscript, um, garbage fire you know, garbage. Eric sat down and, 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 and wrote it. He was so fired up. He wrote it in four and a half weeks. Well, so. no, I mean, it's not, he was so fired up. He says, God, this is what I got to beat. I do it in my sleep. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I feel, I feel like I can't fail now. I mean, the bar is set so low. You can't even trip on it. So, okay, fine. I, and whoever, whoever wrote that, that first thing, we're not going to say your name and mainly I'm not going to, cause I don't know it. <laughs> no one, no one knows. <laughs> wow so now now a little bit more book specific now not quite into uh heathen dogs area because i know i just might as well walk away when that starts because he's gonna have some fun um but are there any planned follow-ups to mutants in orbit uh, specifically the rift side see i use it for tmnt i don't care about the rift side but apparently there are people that want to know if there's gonna be more involved with that on the rift side of uh of uh, mutants in orbit i see quizzical looks maybe <laughs> Sort of. That means they haven't they haven't seriously thought about it. We, no, we, we, we actually <laughs> no, have we actually discussed have. it. Yeah. We actually discussed it. Um, there, I, let's say there are really big things we want to do first. Awesome. No, there you go. That's a good answer. I mean, because it's it, uh, yeah. Shit. If you ask him, like, I love most of the properties. I've I've never even played Recon, but I've read through it, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I love tactical war games, right? So I'm mm -hmm. like, Kev. I would love to reboot Recon as a, I'd love to write a modern war game like that and where it's more on the tactics with you know lighter role playing and you know but I'd love to write half of the yeah. you know, I'd love, love yeah. to Mechanoids, do a new edition of all types of stuff uh, yeah. you know phase world you yeah. know as its own setting and you know all that kind of stuff but um you know its own core game but, which is why you know, he's the guy but yeah, I'm very happy with that kind of stuff, right? And so there's a lot of things that we'd love to do. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things that though, that if, you know, we that just that, th things like that, that's really cool, but it's it doesn't come before some other stuff. Okay. I'm, and I'm sure that's gonna be a very similar answer for the next couple out there. Um, sure, how, about we're happy to answer. how about a Riff's Laszlo book beyond the manuscript phase? Apparently somebody's got a manuscript of that one, but uh, it hasn't been turned into a real book. Yeah, that, that's definitely coming. Can't okay. say when. All right. Now, one well, that's a little bit near and dear to my heart. I oh, by the way, are, are you all aware of the um, – we, we added a, uh, a status page, a project status page, mm. to the Palladium website, an official project status page, so you can see what has just finished production, what, what our new releases are. Um, you can see what is in current production, um, what is in development, where manuscripts and art – are are boiling and then what is on like official hold and what's been officially canceled so that's a real great resource because we get a lot of questions where people say mm -hmm. what about this book what about that book what about this thing i heard about 30 years ago you know <laughs> what about this thing that someone told me in a rumor right so you can look on that page it should have everything for Just any real quickly for the folks questions. out there and uh i'm gonna just pop this up for a second there you go project status and you can see Right there on the Palladium page. You're welcome. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, oh, let me get back to my Discord questions here. Now, this one's a little more near and dear to me, and I have seen an answer on this. Just wonder if the answer's changed. Uh, that's so. Somebody posted what I reworded it, but uh, outmoded equipment in games such as Heroes Unlimited, After the Bomb, or for me, Compendium of Modern Weapons. I love that book. So outmoded. to include things like uh, like AI, artificial intelligence, uh, biotech, and just new and improved modern theory crafty based on, we'll say, science that's from today, vice 1990. Well, I think there's two. Th 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 we talk about this, too. Yeah. You know, part of this is when you write it up, do you you era proof it? Right. So, for instance, if you when I work on Savage Rifts, we never include the number of teraflops or whatever. Mm -hmm. on the personal computer we just focus on the game mechanic effects and describe what it can do oh it's a holographic projector or you know it's a language translator and this is what it does we don't describe how many megabytes of ram or the cpu or anything like that mm -hmm. if you do that you kind of future proof your equipment and gear um, and we look we're looking to do that more in the future because you know it's like we want our books to be timeless and when you have a 20 year old description of a personal computing device that includes 
stuff like that. That doesn't I got really ten mega memory. It's great. Hang on, hang on, <laughs> hang on. No, uh, Shadowrun, Shadowrun went a different way with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It came out what ninety two. Sure, no, no, 90, 90 for first edition, 89, 89, 89, 89, 89, 89. Yeah. But but instead of using normal uh amounts of storage, remember they made up their own thing, mega pulses. Yeah. What's a mega pulse? We're not telling you, it's whatever you want it to be. That's mm-hmm. a yeah, we could do applied flu botanum for stuff like that, and we probably will with some things, right? So it, it, you can go look that up on the internet, but yeah, it's yeah. you know, it then you're just making up language, but really, the the, the core idea is that it's how does it affect gameplay, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. And, and as far as updating some of those books, you know, maybe in, in the future, like like one reason we had left, uh, you know, the Compendium of Modern Weapons out because it wasn't up to date. And then we had so many requests for it. You know, Sean said, well, why don't we just call it, you know, Modern Weapons and it covers the vast majority of it. And guess what they're using right now in Russia and Ukraine? But so you, you add in drones, that book is very relevant mm-hmm. right yeah. now. And, yeah. you know, well, guess it, what? It, it the really Chinese helped. Have, that's, that's the Russian have military hasn't built anything oh. new in 20 years, but yeah. <laughs> that's as, as someone who was a military analyst, let me tell you, China has poor knockoffs of the Russian stuff in those books, right? I mean, that's that's how most of the world works. So the, the Compendium of Modern Weapons isn't as outdated as you think. It's sure. Yeah, it doesn't have an M4 in it. Guess what? It has an M16. Go online. And so, so you said something that's difference. very important to me, uh, and something that I have a, a hard time explaining to people. And I don't know what this—if it's a simulationist or I'm just it horrible at explaining it—but I can use that compendium of modern weapons book and just say it's this gun that does 3D6 because it's the same nine millimeter round, yada yada. But it doesn't. But that's not the same gun. No, it is. It's the same gut. I don't care about the feet per second. Well, if I look up in Jane's or in Wikipedia, it says that one fires 200 well, meters further. None of that, that matters. Book have, <laughs> that, that book does have a lot of details from Jane's, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. it, that's what they use to, to produce it. And But there's also a table. I mean, there's just, yeah, you could go look up. Look, so when I, I used that book when I was working on Titan Robotics and some of the new weapons in there. Mm-hmm. To, to, to There's a table for your different, uh, you know, penetration value um, for your different um, rounds and damage mm-hmm. values for your different ballistic rounds. I use that for more to, to for more modern rounds that I've put. Uh, I forget what it's the well the, the whatever the new um, ceramic cased ammunition or plastic case ammunition is that they're looking at for the U.S. U.S. military for the mm-hmm. battle rifle. Um, I have an equivalent in there in a in, in a in a new a new arms manufacturer um, one of the guns and so but I use that book to do it. So yeah, most of the stuff is right there. Yeah, we I would love to do it. We've talked about it. You know, it's well, it kind of gets about time I, and what's priorities. Ironically, and, it kind of gets back to what we were talking about earlier. With it's broken. A lot of people these days want the exact specific information mm-hmm. on that exact gun. They don't want to say, well, it's basically this. So, I'm going to use that. They, it, but it's like, but no, it's not that. And, and that's where it's sort of a different mentality these days. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying people right want it. those kind of specifics. We'd love to go back and review a lot of those things. So sure. do, that, that I think there's a lot of value to that. And there's a lot of value uh, with those weapons compendiums that, that gamers love. I love, right? Um, and still love. So that's why we're printing the book again, right? Because at least it's out there, even if we haven't gotten a chance to update it yet. Well, and I want to mention too, that's a great, that particular book is a great example of us listening to our fans. We had gotten a number of people asking us for that book. And then at a, the Palladium Open House, a couple, you know, someone said, would you please re, re-release that? And, and, and numerous people were like, yeah, please. And Sean's like, afterwards, he's like, yeah, why, why don't we? Yeah, because I told him we should like two months before that. And <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we, I guess we should. And we did. And, you know. Yeah, no, uh-huh. but we'd love to go through a lot of that stuff and clean it up, right? Or update it and add new stuff or whatever. Um, there's a lot but it's of... it's low priority. It, I mean, yeah, compared to, you know, other things that, you know, would we, would we better off, you know, doing X, Y, or Z, you know, things like that might need to take a back sure. seat until other things are developed first. 
No, I, I agree. And, and I'm one of those people that I may have struggled with it years ago, especially in the 90s. But now when I look at it, I like that. It's like now I'm creating more of my world. I don't want you to tell me the world. Give me your framework in the rules. Give me your framework in the setting and let me take it from there. And the other thing is, is yes, how 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 usable is it right now? And would you rather have a new version of that or this Laszlo book that you were just mentioning? Yeah. Me? No, I'm okay. just saying anyone, right? <laughs> anyone. That's, I know, right. Would you rather a new book or would you rather an updated version of an older book? And that's very that's a very real re yeah. real question to ask because there's just two of us. Yeah. All right. It's time for me to stop beating around the bush. I got the big one. And, the, and then oh. I'm going to unleash Heathen Dog. All right. Uh, and that is... There's a huge desire from our Discord people, and I understand it. Whether you want to call it second edition, revised, third edition, a universal system, and, and that's kind of my, my uh, uh, take on it, uh, an updated, just reformatted core rules of Platinum. Here's my suggestion. Take it or leave it. Tell me I'm an idiot. That's fine. You're this idiot. is what I would oh, like I to see. wait. Sorry. You, you call me that don't jump the gun. Don't jump the gun. <laughs> <laughs> he called me beforehand, so he's just adding yeah, on. Uh, is I would like Timing to see. I would like to see a core rule book with one single unified system. Every hand to hand basic is the same. Every hand to hand martial arts is the same. Every uh, skill is the same percentage, and then treat riffs, heroes unlimited, after the bomb, yada yada, as settings that say, well, in riffs. Computers aren't as relevant. So now everybody starts at minus 40% if you take this computer or whatever it has to be. Have the setting take over, but have that universal system, so to speak. That would be yeah. my perfect world. Wake up well, in the morning, yes. best bow tied Christmas gift ever. Great idea. Wonderful suggestion. <laughs> Shut the hell up. That, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> so, I mean, but other folks, like I said, they're calling it like second edition, third edition. Are there any plans for something legit, legit plans for something like that in the near future? So our release, uh, our release window um, is stated on the website, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that goes with the publicly announced releases. That means no. Oh, I, I see. I see the grins. I think they're working on it, just not telling us yet. We'll go with that one. I'm just gonna say yes. The publicly announced releases. We don't want to have uh, talk about anything that we might have in the works that is. No, not that's right. fair. Yeah, yeah, we have lots of things in the works. I mean, I'm still I, finishing up Titan Robotics, right? So you know, chop chop. No, but I, but I, oh, I wow. had, to, I, I had to ask that though because it, it, I don't think it anything is asked more than that one. Yeah. Uh, hey, and yeah. and and I just want to say we, you know, we, we hear our fans and we appreciate and we, their input and feedback and ideas, and, and we are listening. And now, shut up, Max. Go make your own game. No, <laughs> so. We're going to get to some very book specific stuff now. I'm going to, I've got a couple here, but it's time for me to kind of relinquish a little bit for Heathen Dog and let him unleash a little bit because I'll, I'll calm it down some when we're done. Um, but he's got some questions. And I just want to say for the re record, I love the Diabolist, although I don't think he's going to bring that one up. Maybe he will. Uh, I, I love will, the Diabolist and I would, and I would play one right now. 